right? Okay, guys, welcome to our class this morning on IT Service Phone. This is kind of a fun, fun class um, because it's just about how the telephones are used in the service desk. And uh, that makes up like about half of the lesson. Then the second half of the lesson is how we as service desk op, um, agents, if we were a service desk agent, how we could best use those telephones in the service desk. And so, yeah, there's some nice images that sort of represent that, I suppose. Now, the, uh, the difference here, it's talking about incoming calls and outgoing calls. They could be from the service desk, right? So I imagine you could easily see where incoming calls would be, people calling in with incidents and service requests. Outgoing calls is where you're getting back to them with solutions, or maybe where you're going uh, and um, without being solicited, you're um, offering some solutions. So there's a th the thing that you should get from this slide is that uh, in a service desk environment, there's going to be lots of telecommunication going on. So you have many, many, um, many lines, uh, many calls, uh, many customers and many agents. And so that requires some special software. So, you know, you have to have uh, multiple lines that are available to each, each agent. And so there's gonna be some software in that and some hardware. And there's some examples there at the bottom that you may come across at some point. These would be, be solutions. This would be like a full solution. The Cisco Unified Contact Center would involve some hardware and some software and likewise with these others. So these are the people that would be involved in a um, service desk uh, agent that would be like us. If we were working in a service desk as uh, at the level one, you might be using these other names, analyst or representative customers. That's pretty obvious who they are. Uh, now the calls queue, sometimes when the, the customer calls, they don't actually talk to an agent immediately, right? They get put in, they, they talk to like a robot, right? So they end up in a queue. And so that queue, how is that queue managed? Um, that's an important um, feature of the software of whatever system that they're using. And so there's some so software to help them to do that. Um, this is the name that we use for that. We use this acronym ACD to describe special software and hardware together as a package, which allows you to manage that queue of incoming calls. And so we call it the automatic call distribu distri distributor or automatic call distribution. And so this image over here on the right sort of represents that call. These um, people here, avatars, that's a bunch of our customers. They're calling in and uh, to our, our system. Our system then distributes those calls uh, to the agents who can pick them up. Now, when I say it distributes them, it might just be first, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you're free, you just get the next call. That would be the simplest way of doing it. But it could also be, that different agents with different skills get different calls. And so usually those things are built into the uh, automatic call distribution um, software. And now this is actually an image, I think of uh, Hassan Oden, Oder. He's the, um, the, other, um, the other instructor in this course. So he's put that there. But what is nice about that is we can see that this individual who could be on the service desk that has two different lines that they can use. Now, one of those lines would be the IT, ITS uh, service center agent. That would be the number that people calling in asking for a service or to, to lodge an incident, they would use that number. The other number would be a private line, I guess you could say, the number which you wouldn't give to your customers. Uh, you use that to sort of, um, maybe once a um, solution is underway, you might use it then, but you don't sort of just give it out to people um, normally. So normally your customers are not gonna be able to dial you directly. Uh, the idea of status, uh, anytime you've seen a queue and you will see queues at like all the government departments, uh, you'll see, you know, the number comes up and says, go to number 10, window 10, or go to number five. Um, so what's happening there is there has to be some status of that individual. So the status could be that they're waiting for the next customer they're available. Uh, if they're actually working with somebody, then we'd call that talking status. Now, I gave the example of work going to a government office and you see the all the windows there and you go to which window depending on, on um, your number. Um, with the telephone, uh, it's gonna be a little bit different, um, but each of the agents will still uh, have each of these 
um, status is available to them. So when they sign in, they will go and they will um, log in and they'll be available for a call. And they can set it to be not available. Supposing they're working on a solution for somebody, they can't be available then because they can't take any more calls. So, uh, so during that time, they would uh, either put themselves on a not available status probably because they're working on something for somebody. When they're talking, if there's somebody else on the line, they will not be available. Um, at the end of whatever they've been doing, uh, there's gonna be a wrapping up period. And you, you notice this when people do their service, they're gonna spend a bit of time at the end it looks like they're doing some paperwork or anything, something like that. If they were in the service desk, it might not involve actual physical paper, but they would have to be entering some fields in some database, and uh, uh, the database being uh, the um, incident management system. Uh, so again, the break is kind of like not available. Only when there's an available status is the, um, is the uh, agent going to receive telephone calls. And so, yeah. Uh, there are various reports and um, various information that you can get from your, your call system. So you can have a look at that and see how many calls are waiting at any time that's going to show up on your system. And uh, uh, you can do a report later and see uh, what was the length of those calls. And all of that information is good for quality. Uh, what I mean by that is to, to uh, make sure that our agents are handling those um, calls in the best way possible. And yeah, there's some more re reports on that. Um, so uh, the management can look, uh, can gather little reports from the system and see what various agents have been doing. So that wouldn't be a report that typical agents would see, but the management could see that. And that's a way of, that they have that they can uh, ensure the quality. Okay, so the idea here being that, um, oh, is we would call these channels, uh, emails, phone, and walk-in. Uh, how do customers actually access the system? And I guess we would say that uh, the, the phone is becoming a more and more important thing. Well, it's always been, but I think that we can look forward in the future that people will always be using phones in the, in the service desk um, because it's such an effective way of dealing uh, with customers. I think you agree, I hope you agree that sort of talking to somebody, um, there's a lot more, um, communication happens that way than say with emails or other things. Uh, what I mean is it's because it's real time, you can pick up um, sort of, I don't want to use the word emotion because, but, but what I mean is you can pick up some cues from the way that they speak that you wouldn't necessarily get very accurately from an email. Yes, Abdul Rahman. Yes. So you have in the service desk, you have multiple layers. So, um, you know, our levels, we would call them. Level one is the people that are making the, uh, that are there at the desk making the phone calls and receiving the phone calls, they're level one. And the idea is that we saw in, in lecture yesterday was that uh, we try and solve as much as we can at that level, because that's the cheapest and the closest way to do it. But there are things, many things often, that uh, they're not going to be able to solve. And then we go to the next level, which is our sort of engineers. Uh, we call that level two. And uh, then even maybe they can't solve things, in which case we go to our vendors, um, sort of like your Microsoft support people. Um, yeah, so we, we have more than one layer that we can uh, use to um, solve issues. Right, so a little bit more on this. So if you had a uh, call center that was uh, properly provided with software and hardware, all of these things, or many of these things, or most of these things you should be able to provide. So. Um, I'm sure that you're sort of uh, familiar with uh, voice over IP. Uh, voice over IP is actually going to save a bit of money for your uh, service desk because that means that instead of having to have to hold up a, a, um, a phone line with a end-to-end uh, -end connection, uh, you can use um, IP, which uh, allows for packet switching, uh, which is much more 
uh, efficient. Monitoring analytics. So uh, that was mentioned in previous slides, right? Um, can we get reports out of our, um, our, our call management software? Voicemail, uh, you'll see in a slide that uh, will come later that uh, voicemail has some uh, risk associated with it, but it can also still be useful. And so we have to manage voicemail pretty well. Call recording, you know, uh, you've probably heard that when you've been on a, a service line with somebody. Uh, this call will be recorded for training and quality purposes, something like that. So uh, that's quite a good thing now. In the past, that might have been an expensive and difficult thing, but now we're finding that our um, our um, storage media is much cheaper, and we can we can save a lot of stuff. Multiple queues. I'm sorry, I went back where I didn't mean to. Let's see, get this back over there. Uh, multiple queues. The idea there of skills based routing, and we have a slide on that. Uh, but skills based routing. Somebody is expert in some uh, hardware thing. Somebody's expert in some software thing. They don't get the same calls, right? The software guy gets the software calls. The hardware guy gets the hardware calls. Uh, that type of thing. Announcements. We will talk about these in later slides. So let's uh, just have a look at that. This this slide is about. Okay, so you're going to have a service desk. Uh, what kind of decision making? What kind of inputs are you going to put into your decision making on how you're going to make your service desk? You know, how much money you're going to spend on it? How much equipment you're going to have? What is going to be the throughput, etc. Uh, then these are the types of things that you would consider. Well, how many, how big is your help service desk or help desk? How many uh, agents have you got? How many customers? Uh, what are the customer, what type of customers do you have? So that comes down to the acceptable service layer in a level. I mean, if you have just sort of um, random sort of uh, retail customers, uh, then the level of service, they'll usually put up with a five minute wait on the phone, right? Uh, if you have sort of higher, um, spending, you know, um, uh, you, you use whatever you want to call them, VIP customers, uh, and they're spending a lot of money. You don't, you really don't want to lose them. And so you're going to have a different layer of service there, right? To, to make sure that they, you might even, uh, what, what happens in many large companies, uh, if you have a customer that perhaps they're a government customer or something like that, you know, and they, they have a big account, well, you won't be asking them to call the service desk at all. You know, you'll have an account representative that they deal with and they got their private number and they just call this guy up and say, look, I got this problem. Can you fix it? And you know, and there's that one to one contact. Um, they call it an account executive. And so with big accounts, they might just do that. Um, so voice over IP, I mentioned it. The idea of it is instead of having an end to end switched line um, and you guys are uh, networking students, so you know about that, you know, the difference between a switched line and a packet switched line a circuit switch line and a packet switch line. So instead of having a, a circuit switch line, which is more expensive, I mean, you've got to have all those circuits, right? Uh, you have a much more efficient way of doing it, which is just to route packets around. You let the routers, um, so it's just like internet traffic. And so that's how voice over IP is. That's why they call it voice over IP. It's just like internet traffic. It's, it's more efficient. Um, now, you don't necessarily know that it's that different. Uh, what you'll see is on your desk is that your phone will be connected to the internet uh, uh, jack, and then it'll be connected to your computer. And so that's how you'll get your, um, your connection through. And yeah, it's cheaper. And as it says there, you can integrate with other data systems because it's working with IP that that phone traffic can go through and be crunched by computer systems, right? And so you can gather data out of it, make reports. Voicemail. Um, so I mentioned voicemail in a minute ago, and I said that there's a risk there. The risk is that you're going to really upset your customers because they leave voicemail messages and nobody ever gets back to them. So, I mean, if you're going to have to have voicemail, then you need to just be, the, the word we use here is really vigilant. You just have to like every day, just get onto those voicemails. Now, what the suggestion here is that if the customer calls in and leaves a voicemail message, that they get a ticket number. So I'm not sure how they do that on a voicemail. Uh, you know, maybe that just means that you're super vigilant and every day you're just answering those things uh, and putting a, a ticket on them. But that should happen. Uh, can you see the problem with that? I mean, there's some people never, never check their voicemail, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, and you, you leave a voicemail and says, you know, this, this mailbox is full or something like that. You know, uh, if you're going to use it, you have to make sure you clear out that voice mailbox uh, regularly. So it's not maybe the best idea. Call recording, as I said, well, that could be used for um, quality and training purposes. That's what they say when they record it, right? <laughs> um, 
transferring and and conference calling. We've got a bunch of slides about that, so I'm not going to say too much about that now. Skill-based routing, SBR, multiple queues. I uh, I've already mentioned it, haven't I? You know, uh, it's a it's a feature that's going to be built into the hardware software of your package that you've got for your calls call management. And what it is is basically you can set up different queues for different people. And when the calls come in, you know, push one for har hardware, push two for software, push three for, I don't know, uh, new phones or something like that. And then they go to a different queue depending on what their um, thing is. And of course, nowadays, the, um, the interface that they're getting with the customer is so much better that sometimes you don't even have to push any buttons. You know, it'll just listen for you, right? Just speak the numbers. And um, yeah, so just like it does on your phone. Uh, the idea of the announcement system is that you can have that when the customer or the agent, either way or both, uh, picks up that phone, they receive an announcement from the system. The system says to them, today we're doing blah, blah, right? Or, or this is happening today or tomorrow or something like that, an announcement. They, this is a new company policy that can, that can actually just be put onto the system and uh, particular people or everybody can uh, receive an announcement that way. Um, the automated attendant, that's kind of like your uh, robot that's answering those calls, right? Contact management. So the idea of that is, who do we know? Uh, so how do we know who's calling us? How do we know who's calling us? And so, you know, is there some way that we're identifying our customers, you know, by an ID that they have? Uh, are we matching their name to something in the database? Um, and so that's, that's quite important. And so that would be in the thing. It might ask you, right? When the person calls up, they might say, you know, can you please put in your student, your 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 staff ID or your student ID, and then we we've got some some details about them. Uh, interactive voice response. I I kind of mentioned that so that so that based on what the customer is saying into the phone, they get some kind of an interaction with your computer system. Um, and that is, this one here is kind of related to that CTI computer telephony inter interaction. So what's happening is the customer rings up and says, you know, I want this and this and this, and we get their their caller ID just from the from, we know what their number is, and based on their caller ID, that is somehow uh, linked in our database to the um, all the interactions that we've had with this person, and so so we can do a search immediately, and this happens automatically. Only sign for one person, please. Uh, so just based on their customer ID or their um, or their ID on their um, on their phone, we can pull up automatically information that we've had about all our interactions with them straight from the database. Uh, now there is also associated with this this idea of a screen pop. Uh, the idea of a screen pop just means that the um, customer service rep is going to see on their screen all of that stuff pop up in a separate window. All right. And uh, so that's going to be helpful, we hope. All right, so um, are there any problems with using the telephone? Yeah, uh, just as it says there, uh, if it's not done properly, it's going to cost money and it's going to make your customers unhappy. Um, uh, if they're waiting long times, you know, um, if people aren't answering, uh, you know, uh, if, if when they get when they answer, they get through the wrong people. Uh, you know, if nobody ever follows up afterwards, those kind of things, you know, that. So I guess what that's saying is you might have a call management system, but it's not just good enough to rely on the technology. You have to have the people doing the right thing as well. And that was sort of mentioned when we talked about the voicemail. Cruising along. All right. So the idea of this slide is you should learn how to talk to people on the phone. Maybe you're gonna work in a service desk, maybe not. But even if you don't, it's a good skill. So basically it's a skill that perhaps should go on your CV. You know, I have interacted with lots of people on the phone. It's a very, very valuable skill. Um, so there's so many things in it, right? First, you're, you're learning how to um, be very brief and, um, and very informative in the way that you speak. So you answer the phone, you say, this is Mark Floden, I'm with the, uh, uh, University of Doha um, of Science and Technology Help Desk. How can I help you? Or, or, or maybe you have something which says, you know, um, uh, 
is is there some, yeah how can i help you i think we'll do it yeah um but basically there's a way that you would say these things so you see you see what you're doing there you're giving them some information and then you're asking them you know uh you're getting straight to it those are skills right um and it's not hard to learn skills but it's they're very useful um phone etiquette all that thing it's going to help you in your job i talked a lot about that perhaps too much um so as i said there if people are if they are having a bad interaction with your uh, service desk telephone then that's going to reflect on their satisfaction generally right so as it says they're wait, waiting long times in queues uh interacting with um poorly trained um service people you know all of these things are going to annoy them or interacting with the wrong service people right so maybe they have a particular um, thing that somebody else somebody in there can help them with but they got routed to the wrong person now there's a thing there about unsupported products and services we've got a couple of slides and i'll refer to that afterwards and yeah we're going to talk about also closing the thing oh, it wouldn't move for me and then all of a sudden it moves everywhere oh. yeah back yeah all right so it's this one I just mentioned this, right? When you pick up the phone, what do you do? You should identify yourself. Identify yourself comes in two parts. Who you are, what's your function? This is Mark Bowden, service desk of like blah, blah, blah. And then the next thing is ask them the question. Ask them the question, what, how can I help you? Uh, so that is basically uniform everywhere that we're doing this. I pressed and it didn't happen because I think that's a video. So please watch that video on your own. You know, I don't show videos during class. You can uh, please do that on your own. Um, so the point here is about using a script. Why would we use a script? Wouldn't it sound kind of canned and insincere, like you're reading off something? Maybe, but we're still encouraged to use a script because what it will do is it'll make consistency that you know every time we have a customer coming in you know if we're thinking of uh, whatever we're thinking of we could be interacting with the customer and not getting the necessary information from them and so if we have a script that'll make sure that we do get the necessary information from them so there is a benefit um but as it says uh don't sort of um uh make it too sort of strained here's some examples of how you might answer so see look for the three parts there um thank you for calling the help desk identified themselves identified the help desk asked the question three things in that one statement right uh, identified themselves identified the help desk asked the question again identified themselves identified the help desk asked the question self help desk the question again self help desk uh, where's the question uh, best company yeah ask the question so those things are required when you pick up the phone if you don't you'll actually be seen i think if i rang i don't like this it does happen a lot people answer pick up the phone and then i have to say to them is this such and such and you kind of think well you know why didn't they just tell me you know so, because I, I don't want to talk to them unless i know who it is what means who such and such <laughs> did i say that uh such and such just just is a it's a saying which just could be you could just add anything to it so such and such just means not identified thing <laughs> does that make sense that that could be identified but i'm not going to identify it for you there um this this slide is about listening actively as opposed to listening passively listening passively uh, if we go down this slide, we see the top one that's very passive, where you're just listening, but it's not even registering in your mind. This is just such a passive thing. It's not going to be useful to you or the customer. Uh, maybe you listen and you, uh, from time to time, you make some noises like, aha, uh -huh, yes, that's better because at least then the person on the other end is like, okay, this person is actually listening to me. They can tell that I'm saying something, but even better is this idea of active listening so active listening you're going to be carefully listening to everything they say you're going to be maybe rephrasing what they've said and saying it back to them 
you are going to be doing this. Uh huh. Okay, go on. Those type of things. And you, you might be at the end, you'll say, okay, this is what you said to me. Did I understand you? That would be kind of, uh, you know, rephrasing what they said and make sure that you understood what they said. That would be active listening. So if you're active listening, you're going to be asking some questions. You're going to be interacting with them rather than just sitting there quiet on the phone. And that's really necessary. Now, the idea here of unsupported products, the person rings up and they ask you about something that they installed on their computer that we don't support. Or maybe they brought in their laptop and we don't support it. Now, the thing is, we don't want to be just mean and sort of, you know, just tell them to go and shove off or something like that. That's, that's not really very good either. We will make a best effort. Maybe we'll sort of um, give them a couple of minutes. Okay, just based on my understanding, you can try this, this, and this. But we're not providing warranties for them on that. It's an unsupported product. More likely, what we should do is as we build up our skill in the help desk, we know who will be able to help them. And perhaps it's somebody outside the organization, or perhaps it's somebody with particular skill. You know, uh, if you make the, and here's a phone number, you can call these people and they'd be able to help you. Because if you start supporting unsupported products and services, you actually, it sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? It sounds like you're being altruistic. You know, I help everybody, you know, everybody comes, I help everybody. But you don't have the skill for that and you don't have the resources for that. And so you're going to end up with disappointment and you're going, disappointment is gonna to lead to um, yeah, complaints. Um, so uh, if you know somebody that, that uh, actually does know how to support that. If you know, maybe you just got the knowledge, right? This is an unsupported product, but yeah, you know, I'm a smart guy. I know how to do this. Yeah, give them a few minutes. You know what I mean? That's, that's just reasonable. Just give them a few minutes of that. Okay, so uh, we don't support that product, but yeah, okay, you could try this, this, and this, and that might work. Uh, otherwise, try and put, point them in the direction that they could. Best effort is that thing that I mentioned, which is, Okay, this is not a product that we support, but we'll give you five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes um, for things that we don't support. Okay, so there we go. Having a glitch on the, on the things. So as it says there, if you are spending a lot of time on unsupported product, that's time that you won't, you know, could have been used on something you could support. Okay, so you might say, isn't supporting our customers always good? Well. Yeah, but it's it's um, something that we don't really have the, um, the resource to support it. And so other people could be waiting. You could be giving a, a low quality um, response. So yeah, basically we try not to do that. Closing the call, this is quite important. And I'm sure that you've come across this because you would have at some point in your life, you've interacted with somebody on a phone. You know, maybe it was with a bank, some customer service people, right? Uh, maybe it was an airline, some uh, orito, and you'll know the ones that are pretty good at it. And they always do this at the end of the call, right? Uh, at the end of the call, there's some certain steps that they do. They take their time. So that's what we mean there. We don't rush. Well, let's have, have a look at what they do. They've got some steps here. Let's see if we can find that step. So they would do this. They'd say, okay, during this call, we talked about this, 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 and this. That's summarizing the call. Uh, then we decided that you would do this, this, and this, and I would do this, this, and this. This is the action steps. You know, the service desk is going to do this to help you. Um, then your, we've opened this ticket, and we anticipate that your your um, solution will be within two hours, three days, whatever. So we're going to tell them that uh, you you need to know this kind of thing to help you to solve that. So we share some information. Then at the end, and you'll notice this, right? I know you've you've heard this at the bank. When you've said all this stuff and blah, 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 maybe you've been talking to them for 10 minutes or something like that, and, and they've solved the thing, they won't just hang up, they'll say, is there anything else that I can do for you today? They always say that, don't they? And we should, is there anything else that I can do? And then they wait, right? Well, then they thank the customer for following, and then they wait, let the customer hang up first. Now, this is why we have to let the customer hang up first, because, because you say to the customer, is there anything else I can do? And the customer says, no. And then you hang up. And as you're hanging up, the customer remembers something. They go, oh, wait, and then click. How does it feel if you're the customer, right? Not great. So you wait for the customer to hang up and then you're not gonna have that sort of disappointment. 
Sometimes we have to put the customer on hold. There'd be a few reasons for that. Okay, we got to go and solve a problem for them. So we're just going to put them on hold way to do that. Uh, maybe we have to get some more resources to do that. Maybe we have to put them on hold and find somebody better to, for them to talk to. Um, and so there's sort of ways that we can do that. We're, before we do that, we're always going to tell them, you know, uh, maybe ask them and maybe give them the option. Um, you know, this is going to take a couple of minutes to solve this. Uh, so would it be okay with you if I put, it, put you on hold? Um, it, otherwise, I could call you back in five minutes. And you've probably heard that too. And, you know, usually they'll say, yeah, it's okay. Put me on hold for 10 minutes. And uh, so if it's going to be like three or four minutes, you'll say that, or two minutes, they'll say, okay, I think it's going to be like five, four minutes or something like that. And then you hope you get back by two. Now, if it gets close to the four minutes, you're going to say, actually, four minutes is kind of a long time to get back to. Actually, the last one of those that I had when I was talking to uh, somebody at a customer service, they said to me, uh, okay, I'm going to put you on hold but I'll be listening. And so when you're ready with the information, just say, so I guess that's kind of not really hold, right? And so, I mean, I think she said, I'm just gonna go quiet. Uh, that was it rather than going on hold. Just gonna go quiet and I'll be here. When you're ready, just speak. I thought that was awesome. That's better than going on hold. So some service desks do that. Uh, and here's some suggestions for that. I'm gonna put you on hold for approximately two minutes. Is that okay? All right, if that's okay, I'll get back to you now. Um, two minutes are up, you, then you speak to, you're either finished or you need to actually talk to them. Say, right, sorry, it's gonna take a bit longer than I thought. Is that okay? It's not, it's gonna take 15 minutes. Can I call you back? Or do you mind waiting? 15 minutes is a bit long time. To be honest. All right, so this idea of uh, hot, cold and warm, uh, it's just like uh, the customer is on there and we need to have, they need to speak to somebody else. So that's what we mean by transfer. And so that transfer can be hot, warm, or cold. So let's talk about that. Um, okay. Um, so when you're transferring, somebody else is coming in on the call. And so you need to actually identify that person is coming in on the call. Um, and uh, as it says there, you might actually put the customer on hold while you get your other service agent on the call, and then you bring the customer into the call. So the difference between hot, warm, and cold. With a hot call, you never leave the call until the call's over. So that's what we mean by hot is you're always there. And so another word for that would be, it's a conference call. So basically you're saying to your customer, I'm gonna bring so-and-so in on the call. You introduce so-and-so and you stay there. Now, why would you do that? Because maybe there's a lot of information that is needed from you to help sort, make this solution. And so you need to stay on the call. Uh, so that would be a hot transfer. Um, and there's some stuff there about uh, establishing the, Conference call. So guys, can I have your attention, please? So um, when, when you're doing that hot call, it's a conference call. It could be, you know, it could actually be in a conference room and your customer is going to be really freaked out if they hear a voice that they don't, have, that they don't recognize, just start talking. You know, because, you know, that's their privacy gone, right? Somebody's overhearing my conversation. So that it's very, very important if you're bringing somebody else in on the call, as soon as you do that, well, first you ask the customer, is it okay if I bring so-and-so? And then you introduce that person and let them say, I, I'm so-and-so and this is why I'm here. So that they're not hearing these unknown random voices just sort of into the call. Guys, can I ask you to be quiet, please? Thanks. The warm transfer, as opposed to the hot, hot transfer, we're not staying on the call for the entire duration of the call. We do stay on the call at the start. And why we stay on the call at the start is because we've got some information that we need to pass on to the other agent or the customer. And so that's why we call it a warm call. We're in, introducing them and passing on information. And we won't leave the call until we passed on all the information that we need for that call. But then we will leave it. That's a warm transfer. 
Um, there's a little bit there about the, the um, conference call, but I think that I've already covered that. Now the cold transfer, that's a, the, the last type that we'll talk about there. Basically with the cold transfer, we're not gonna stay on the call. All we do in a cold, on a cold transfer is we introduce the two parties. So so-and-so called you up. They actually want to, not to speak to you, but to so-and-so. It might be that they have an interaction going on with that other agent. And so, yeah, you just put them straight through. Maybe they dialed the wrong number. You know, maybe they wanted to talk to so-and-so. That's a cold transfer. You don't want to stay on that. If they specifically ask for a particular person and, you know, it's not part of your um, ticket that you've, you've been involved with, you just put them through and get off the line. Um, but you need, do need to tell them that you're going to transfer them. And yeah, I think enough on that. All right, the speaker phone, that's kind of like a hot or a, a um, video conference, right? And that's the one that's really, really tricky. Uh, you know, as I said, you know, got five people in the room and then three of them start talking and the customer hasn't heard them uh, before. And you know, that's how they get introduced to them because they hear these noise voices in the background. That is going to creep out some customers, right? And uh, they won't be thanking you for that. So if you're going to do have a speakerphone, everybody has to be identified. Everybody that's within range of that speakerphone, whether they're speaking or not, because you know, just out of um, politeness and out of uh, respect for people's privacy. Okay, so here we go. Here's an example. Let's see how this works. Sorry, guys. I just want to inform you that I will be using speakerphone as I have Mr. Ha Muhammad in the network team. So probably he's standing beside you. And Ms. Rima from the server team, and they should be able to help us to find a solution. And, and maybe they should just say something, you know, hi, I'm Mr. Muhammad. Hi, I'm Ms. Rima. All right. So we're almost done. My gosh, I can run through slides, slides fast, can't I? If I want to. Um, the idea here is telephone skills. It can be a profession. It can be a profession. So like any profession, you can actually study and learn how to do it better. And so there's various resources that you can use to go and study. And, it, and then there's some, some basics here, be responsive. I mean, some service desks, they have like rules, like a three ring rule. Every phone call is answered within three rings, that kind of thing. Um, people don't like ringing out and they also don't like, um, don't like being put on hold and not told what's happening. So you can study and after you've studied and learned a lot about talking to people on the phone, uh, then maybe you can volunteer, um, get some experience making phone calls. The last couple of slides, I think I'm on the last couple of slides. The idea here is, I mentioned this in a previous slide, this call will be monitored for quality and training purposes. So you've heard that, and actually they are. So at the end of the call, um, maybe the service desk agent who was on that call, they can listen to the call. They can say, oh, that, I could have done that better. I could have done that better, you know, but this was pretty good. Yeah, I'm getting better. You know what I mean, um, maybe if it was really good, they could share it with some other service desk agents. So they could say, hey, look, you know, have a look at this. This is how we answer calls. And that works pretty good. Uh, but also for quality. Um, so we just see if things are consistent. Awesome. That's what we mean by monitoring. Uh, a lot of companies, the manager will also then have a chance, maybe as part of a yearly review or something like that, to take a sample of those calls and sort of just uh, listen to them. And then that could be part of their um, salary increment discussion. You know, uh, look at that. You, your phone answering skills are so much better now than they were six months ago. Well, how do I know? Because six months ago, we listened to some of your calls and now we listen to some of your calls and they're getting better because you listen to the things that we recommended to you. Thank you, students. Um, do you have any questions? Oh my gosh, I, can, I don't know how I got through 50 slides in, in uh, 40 minutes. 